This is Twit. So Safari has this new thing called a compact tab bar. And with it, um, the bar is sort of all put into these little tabs. Um, the, the, on iPad, uh, it, it's sort of put into these tabs that exist as part of the actual URL bar. Um, but the and the old school version was where the the sort of search bar slash URL bar was at the top, and underneath it were tabs. And then on iOS, the tab bar gets moved to the bottom of the screen. So instead of being at the top of the screen, it uh, shows up at the bottom. So you can see if you're watching um, down there uh, at the bottom of the screen is the tab bar because it's closer to your thumbs. Uh, that's the whole idea is that the the fingers that you're most likely using to sort of navigate through pages are there at the bottom. You can swipe between pages and tabs uh, just by swiping across that bottom bar to get to the next one. But it's different. And no matter how many times people tell you they like change, humans are predisposed to not enjoy change. A, it, is, uh, it makes us uncomfortable at a sort of um, preternatural level. And so if you jump into this and you think, oh, golly, I do not like this new way of doing things, don't you worry because you can turn this off. So, uh, well, some of it. So let's hop into uh, the settings app. And if we scroll down in the settings app, we can tap on Safari. And if we scroll down a bit, you'll see that there is a section called tabs. And in this, there is the tab bar and the single tab option. Now, all you have to do is switch from tab bar, which is on the left, to single tab, which is on the right, to turn off that feature. And then if you also want to, you can turn it off in landscape as well by toggling on or off landscape tab bar. I went back to the old school style. I like it better. Um, I, there are lots of arguments about you know the web seems to be designed for the tab bar being at the top, which makes sense because that's the way that it's been for so long. And then you can do the same thing on uh, iPad OS. Um, it's the the feature is a little bit differently named. Uh, again, you'd launch the settings app, you'd tap on Safari, and then in, underneath tabs, instead of separate tab bar. Uh, or, well, separate tab bar is the one that we're used to. Compact tab bar is the new one. Uh, in this case, the new feature is on the right. The uh, feature we're used to is on the left. And then that's that's that on that. So those are the options that you have there because the bar is still at the top. Um, I currently have compact tab bar turned on, um, but that's because I just updated this iPhone or excuse me, this iPad. So I'm actually going to change that to separate tab bar because I want to keep things how they were before. So while there are a bunch of fun new features for Safari, um, or, or not, not features per se, but rather uh, redesign of Safari, um, you may find that it's just not, uh, not the not your cup of tea, and so it's very easy to toggle that back to the way that it was before. And if you've got a Mac and you're upgrading there as well, then you'll recognize that um, there are also that there's also that new redesign, and you can turn that on and off too. Um, another interesting thing, another anecdote is uh, my partner did not realize how many tabs <laughs> he had open Aww. on his device. <laughs> and so switching to uh, iOS 15, it was just scrolling. I think it was like 336 tabs total. Um, wow. Just tab after tab after tab. So there's a new feature in iOS 15 called tab groups. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, the idea there is that you know you might be browsing the web to do some research. Maybe you're uh, like me, planning on going on a hike, and so you have several tabs that relate to uh, you know different people who've gone on the hike before. They've shared on their blogs some things, and then you're also wanting to make sure that you've uh, got your plant identification information handy. And so you can set up different tab groups for different uh, topics. And so I could have one called hiking. Uh, the example that Apple has here is in inspiration. And so switching between tab groups, which is between those different tabs that uh, are synced across all of your devices, as long as they're running the latest version of iOS or iPadOS, and then they're able to, um, to, to be opened on any of those devices. And as uh, uh, folks are pointing out in the chat, 
Uh, Scooter X is talking about the um, iOS Safari extension for 1Password. That's another change, a really cool one in iOS 15 that uh, lets you... The, the extensions are a little different from what you're used to in uh, iOS. And so 1Password, like it is in the browser on uh, Safari or Chrome or what have you, is part of the Safari experience as opposed to being part of the keyboard experience. And so it's kind of fun to have it right there in the app. And then there are some other uh, extensions available as well. So yeah, I was really pleased with the Safari features that were added, but uh, most happy with the fact that the designers of the new the new look of Safari were not so prideful that they didn't offer users a way to roll some things back if they wanted to. The fact that those options are there is a, a, you know two thumbs up that you uh, didn't let your pride get in the way of of keeping users uh, happy and uh, able to use the apps that they want to use or the, use Safari in the way that they want to use it. So uh, good yeah. on you there. Yes. I do just want to quickly mention, Micah, because you, you said about your partner who had 336 tabs open or however many. And my mom does this. My grandmother does this. My dad does this. They all end up with so many tabs. And quite frankly, they don't care about the old tabs anymore. If they're looking for something, they'll just open a new tab. There's actually a feature that you can enable inside of settings under Safari. If you scroll down uh, under the settings for tabs that Mike was talking about just now, there's also a close tabs option where you can say manually, that's the default, you can close tabs automatically after a day, after a week, or after a month. Um, and uh, I, I've set this on everybody else's device who I end up managing to a month because otherwise I will occasionally <laughs> get a call of, where did my tab go? Um, but uh, for my devices, it's a week because uh, I try my best to not keep open tabs as a list of things to do. Um, but I have been using tab groups. Tab groups are uh, really useful for me. I've, I've really enjoyed them. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that the, that's become a thing. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think on my iPhone, I have them set to a month. On my iPad, I have it set to close them manually. I am pretty good about closing tabs um, for some reason. I, I have, like, it, it doesn't make sense to me, but uh, I, I tend to... Uh, there's sort of a, a space in my brain that is occupied by tabs. And so I could feel it when there are a bunch of tabs open. So I have to go through and uh, close them whenever I'm done with them. But um, so on, on iPad, if they're there, I want them to stay there. But on my iPhone, yeah, they close manually after a period of time. And uh, I think uh, I might have to covertly turn that feature on. Uh, 